Alright, hi everyone. This is going to be a fairly short video because this is another topic that I'm looking to get into on my health channel and I think it needs more attention from as many people as possible because the ramifications of this stuff on our underlying health are absolutely massive. It will affect everything. To anyone that's interested in my tinnitus videos, I believe fundamentally, I'm sure as you're all aware, that tinnitus is caused by chronic stress the system and frankly I can't think of a bigger underlying chronic stressor than the stuff I'm going to talk about in this video or series of videos or whatever I end up doing. But basically this is about the tropic premise and its uh, impact, its results, whatever, its effect on our jaw growth which is our face basically, the shape of our face, you know, all of this stuff, all of that area of bone growth. The tropic premise basically says that our oral posture dictates the growth of our jaws, and from what I've seen, there's plenty of evidence to back that up. I haven't seen anyone specifically pick it apart yet. They just said, oh, there's no studies, it's not true. And you don't need a scientific study to mean something is actually true, you know? It's nice, it's bloody useful, but just because there's a lack of them so far doesn't mean that it's set in stone. And we've heard so many times from the other side of the, uh, the field, the approach, you know, orthodontics and that sort of thing, that, ah, oh, jaw growth is, is it's genetic, you know, you've got your dad's teeth or your mum's jaw or something along those lines, which is why you get crowded teeth, or in my case, they're gapped at the front, that sort of thing, you know, and still too crowded for wisdom teeth, so it's a very odd shape indeed, if the genetic argument is to be believed, and the main point the orthotropics come to is, well, no other mammal, no other species of mammal, there's about 5,000 species of them, I can't remember exactly how many, but... There's that many, they don't get malcollusion, you know, problems with the teeth. They don't have issues of jaw growth, they, growth, sorry. They don't have issues of craniofacial dystrophy. So something is up, and that's why I'm making these videos, because as my channel's growing, I want to put more and more of this health type stuff out there that I'm interested in, because fundamentally I'm interested in, basically, why are we fucked up as a species now? Why are we so unhealthy when our ancestors with, you know, less abundance of food and harder lives and that, why were they that much healthier, you know? And doctors are very keen in a lot of cases, like I come to studying health mainly through looking at obesity, and their main sort of answer to it all the time is, ah, oh, it must be the patient. They're lazy or ill-willed, you know, discipline problems, whatever, that stuff. This isn't useful, you know? I mean, from what I've seen described of hunter-gatherers and people like that, leisure was something they had in abundance compared to us now. They did a lot of relaxing, a lot of lying about, so if this idea of hard work or genetics is to be believed, well, they work less than us, and they're genetically the same. So something's up, and especially in recent generations, these problems are getting a lot worse. And I got a lot of uh, things that I believe are the cause of that and things I'm happy to debate with, but this is purely about the facial growth stuff. So to get to the point with it, because I'm three minutes in, this should be a short video. The tropic premise says basically our teeth should be lightly together. Um, our lips should be lightly sealed, firmly but lightly, you know, so you shouldn't have gaps when you're talking. You shouldn't have gaps between the speech. It should naturally come together, the lips. Without being pressed, without activation of the mentalis muscle, I think it's called, the chin. You shouldn't be like this to get your lips together. Just And a lot of people are. The chin muscle comes up, and some of that is to do with the growth of the face being an issue. You have to strain to get, you know, emulate decent posture. But that's besides the point at the moment. Let's say I'm keeping it to the point with this. So again, teeth together lightly. The lips are together firmly, but lightly. Not forcing it with... All sorts of muscles and the big one is the tongue needs to go up on the roof of the mouth and when I'm, when you say this a lot of people think ah the tip you know they mean the tip of the tongue goes up on the roof of the mouth so here's the roof tongue goes up like that no tongue goes up like that just all the way across if this is the roof of the mouth you know the tip to the back you know this is the breathing area where you know that bit and the tongue i can't quite do it but the tongue needs to go up completely across it no questions about it the whole thing and that's what causes the jaws to expand, according to the orthotropic theories anyway. That's what causes the jaws to expand. You get good airways, you get prominent cheekbones, gets rid of bags under the eyes like I've got. You have space for all of your teeth and for your tongue, so you don't get gaps because it's not pushing out and expanding the front. You'll have space for your wisdom teeth. In an ideal environment, there'll be gaps behind them, all this sort of stuff. And posture issues, you know, the curve in the neck will go, it will be healthier, the head will be up properly, all that sort of stuff. And yeah, that's the basic idea. So, I would love to hear from different people about different things they've noticed. Look up the symptoms of poor facial growth. See what you have. 
check with your posture see where it's at see what type of posture you have is your tongue up you know particularly well is it down in the mouth mine the past year and a half or so i've been trying to correct my tongue posture and i've been having quite a bit of success with it the results will be slow and they're even slower because my maxilla is down low enough i don't know clinically how significant it is but the fact that i got these big bags under my eyes and you can't you can't see them too well on the camera but in real life they're purple as hell and they've been like it for a decade and a half something like that since i was a child anyway so yeah it this stuff's a big deal and with my posture in particular my tongue used to push against my front teeth in exactly the pattern you can see the gaps you know i've got this gap here on the side between this canine and this incisor i think those are the terms forgive me if they're not the pointy one and the one on the right of the front teeth and i don't have it on this side and my tongue used to push against it like that not on this side but there the gap teeth perfectly fit that and even though i still got the gaps they are closing the middle one not so much i believe it's because I don't quite have, uh, even with the lip seal and stuff that I'm making a point of doing, it, it's not quite enough force pulling on the middle to get the maxilla to narrow in that particular place, you know, to come back in, to get the middle gap to close. But the gaps everywhere else, here, here, and here, they're closing. No questions about it. They're definitely closing. I'm seeing a significant difference. I believe I can spot it on camera compared to my first uh, tinnitus videos three or so months back. Which is not that long in the grand scheme, and considering the quality, it's impressive if I can spot a difference at all, but I'm certain I can. Just, you know, try it. Go back and check that video. See what this, mainly this area, is where I'm mostly noticing it, this gap is. That one seems to definitely be closing in, and it's a hard thing to tell, but it's making my incisors look that bit bigger as they get rebalanced forward as opposed to more narrow. I can definitely tell it against pictures of me when I was younger, about 14. You know, my incisors used to be that kind of shape. And now they, they look like they're getting bigger. They used to look tiny because of it. But yeah, so that's about it. I just want to hear from other people wanting to discuss. The awareness of this stuff needs to get out there because for the time being, it's still an out there theory. And traditional dentists are very resistant to hearing change in this area. Much in the same way that like doctors are resistant to hearing about relaxation techniques working well for tinnitus. They're very fixed on this. Ah, it's physical damage. You're fucked until we decide to come up with a cure or we put enough money in, or time, or whatever. They've been putting a lot in already, to be fair. And like I was discussing with someone the other day, there are bigger factors out there that warrant more time and attention, but they've put a lot of effort in already. You know, I don't think the answer is them sinking more time and effort and people's hopes down the rabbit hole they're in. They need to come back, look at the broader picture. And I'm certain it's the same with this orthotropic stuff, you know, not them specifically, but the field of dentistry. We need to look at the face, because we're deformed compared to our immediate ancestors. You go back a generation, it's way different. You go back the generation before, even bigger difference. You know, you go back a couple of hundred years, it's almost unrecognisable. Let alone you go back thousands to people that were genetically identical to us. I think that's the time frame, but the point is you go back. It was completely different for no genetic difference. This genetic argument is complete bollocks as far as I'm concerned. But I am very open to hearing and reading about people's ideas and research, particularly research on the subject. I'm very open to reading about stuff that points out that it is. I would love for someone to come along and say, oh, no, look, this is it. It's wrong. Ha ha. Just great. That's the best way to learn. As long as it's factual stuff, you know, no more of this. Just, oh, it's pseudoscience. Clearly it's genetic. That's no fucking good. I want to hear debate on this stuff. I want to engage people and talk about different theories. And yeah. I want to be part of getting this stuff out there because it's a big big deal like i say with the tinnitus stuff mine was debilitating not long ago i'm certain my poor facial growth is a part of that because like i said earlier in the video i can't think of a bigger chronic stress than having the face grown poorly and the head tilted whatever as a result putting curves in the spine our fundamental function is being affected by this i read one example from someone that said they had the braces and all that stuff you know pulls the jaws back more problems, and they were in a, like almost a prodigy pianist when they were younger. And people kept asking, oh, how come you didn't take it anywhere? Well, after they had the headgear and stuff like that, they had a pretty severe case from what I'm aware of. This isn't typical type stuff, but basically their mobility in the fingers started to go. And at the high level of, you know, performance, you know, concert pianist type stuff, any little bit could be a big deal, could mean a career or not. So the fact that this stuff is out there, you know, potentially, I'm not claiming typical orthodontic approaches are doing damage like that. 
But the evidence I've seen is very compelling. It looks like we need to clear house. It looks like we really need to look at this stuff and reassess what's going on with these courses because they don't have any of the info on it. All they have is treatment. And orthotropics are asking the right questions. Like Dr. Mew said, he's being a theorist. He's putting these ideas out there. He wants debate on it. And I'm with him completely. I want to see debate. I want to see people getting to the bottom of this. It's unacceptable to keep this shit going on the way it is, just treating people. Not curing. Treating. All they have is the treatments they have. They're not looking for info on the underlying causes of this stuff. They're assuming it's genetic and keeping it going with the system that's in place. Whether that's for their own purposes, or they genuinely believe that's the best for the patient, it doesn't matter. The end result is the same. People are crippled by this stuff. And it's become an absolute epidemic to the point where we don't recognize a healthy face anymore. So, that's about it. I'm starting to turn into almost rant territory, but that's the point. Good oral posture, supposedly, from the orthotropic view, and I'm seeing results that are bearing that out in reality. Good oral posture is teeth lightly together so that they can sock in properly without issues in the bite. The lips together to keep, you know, keep the teeth from going out too far or whatever. Not sure of the exact details, but basically it helps keep it all in line, makes them align properly in the jaw. And then the tongue, big important bit, the tongue on the roof of the mouth, meaning the whole tongue, including the back bit. And that's problematic. It means most people will struggle to breathe a bit. But from what I've seen, it's the only way to truly address these modern health problems we're getting from poorly developed jaws. We have to get the tongue up. We have to get the maxilla to expand forward or expand and grow forward, whatever it is. We have to get that to happen. So anyway, that's about my thoughts on it. Please comment below if you're remotely into this stuff. Offer your thoughts, offer your experience, offer your theories, whatever. I'm just trying to add my voice to it because more of us need to be discussing this stuff. So that's about it. I hope to see you in the comments. Bye.